In this lesson, we'll go through a problem on how you can find the coefficient of friction. The question reads, a 50 kilogram sled is pulled along a surface of constant velocity by a constant force of 200 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. What is the coefficient of friction between the sled and the surface? Let's begin this problem by drawing a free body diagram. So let's represent the sled as this square. And there's a force of 200 newtons being pulled from, let's say, the center of gravity. And this vector represents 200 newtons. And the angle in which this vector makes with the horizontal is 30 degrees. What we can do is break this vector into its x and y components. The y component, which I'll represent with this black vector, will represent the normal. That's the normal vector, the one that goes directly up. And the x component, which I'll represent with this other vector, will be used later on to help us find the coefficient of friction. So to break down a vector into its x and y components, we use trigonometric functions. For example, if we want to find this one, that is the adjacent relative to this angle. We have the hypotenuse adjacent and hypotenuse is cosine. So cosine theta is equal to the adjacent length over the hypotenuse. Let's fill this in. We have cosine at 30 degrees is equal to adjacent, which is what we're looking for. That's the horizontal force. So I'll just represent it as ADJ for adjacent, and that is our hypotenuse as 200. Rearranging this formula by multiplying both sides by 200, what happens is this and this cancel out, and we get our adjacent, which will represent the horizontal force. So I'll take 200 and make sure that your calculator is set to degrees. We multiply this by cosine of 30, and we get 173.2. 173.2 newtons. That's the force pulled horizontally. Now, if we want to find out the magnitude of that vector, the normal, we'll use sine. So I have sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And in case you're curious as to why I use sine, this vector can be drawn over here, if you like. And if we use trigonometric functions, that's the opposite length relative to this angle. So filling this in, we have sine 30 is equal to opposite, that normal force, over the hypotenuse of 200, multiplying both sides by 200. Let's see what we get. 200 times sine of 30, and that is equal to 100 newtons. So there is a vertical force of 100 newtons, and adding this vector and that vector up gives us this red one. Now furthermore, we will be using Newton's second law to see the force due to gravity directly downwards. So Newton's second law is force is equal to mass times acceleration. The mass of this sled is 50 kilograms, which is quite heavy. So we have 50 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now it's important to note that one Newton is equal to one kilogram times mass over second squared. So this is an SI unit that breaks down into that. And this is why when we multiply 50 kilograms with 9.8 meters per second squared, we get a unit of force. Anyway, let's continue. 50 times 9.8 makes 490 Newtons. So we have a normal force going upwards and a force going downwards due to gravity. I'll take the difference between those. So I have 490 Newtons minus 100 Newtons, and that is 390 Newtons. Now since the sled is moving at a constant velocity, the forces that are acting on this sled, this value of 390 Newtons, must be in equilibrium with the horizontal force being exerted to the right. Except remember, there is friction involved that is slowing down this sled. And we take our coefficient of friction, which I'll represent by the Greek letter mu, and multiply it to 390 newtons. So mu times 390 should equal to the horizontal component, which we found. Now I'm just going to ignore this n, just so that 
we don't run into any confusion. And we want to solve for mu. By dividing both sides by 390, the 390s cancel out, and we're left with the coefficient of friction. So 173.2 divided by 390 gives us a coefficient of friction of 0 0.44. And this doesn't have any units, so just leave it as 0 0.44. And there you have it. That is how to find the coefficient of friction in a generic force problem.